right. So that's that. Now, the other thing I wanted to throw out here is uh, I think a lot of people wonder why I have a problem with mate switching hypothesis. I have a problem with it simply because it relies almost solely on the beta buck side, the long-term security side, to the exception of the alpha fuck side, which we can see. It's it's right there in your face. This, where'd it go? This is alpha fucks. That is the face of alpha fucks right there. Lena the plug when she's getting railed and she's getting dug out by what uh, Jason Love. That's the face of alpha fuck. Literally the face of alpha fucks. And it's right there in front of your face. I mean, it's constant. It's unignorable. But we want to say we still want to cast women's mating strategy in the context that all that exists is women's long term choices, because that appeals to the most guys, not the most women. It appeals to them because that's what monogamy is real. That's the monogamy is meant to solve the problem of men, not the problem of women, because women, if they are provided for by a guy who looks like who's the, the complete package. Women would rather share a successful alpha than be saddled with a faithful beta. And in the 21st century, in no other time in human history, have we had at least the perception or women have had the perception of like unlimited choice, whether it's true or it's not is immaterial to the conversation here. Like for instance, like when, um, was it, uh, when destiny asked, um, Myron and Fresh, whether or not they, you know, what what percentage of college co-eds believed or thought that or or get are actually getting flown out to Miami to to go to yacht parties with Drake, Drake, um, or NBA players or whatever, because that's a that's a premise that I've heard lots of times, and not just them, like other people have been using this premise. Is like women have like this; they're spoiled for choice, right? There's if if they have a problem with their boyfriend. It doesn't matter because they already have like unlimited re, you know, positive reinforcement from all the guys who follow them on Instagram. Remember, this is a very recent invention. Social media has only really been around. I mean, literally been around since what, 2006? Twitter was, Twitter was 2006 or, oh no, uh, Facebook was 2006. Twitter was a little bit later. Instagram came after that. The, the, with the, the problem that we have with respect to this understanding of like adaptive mating strategies is you're using the 21st century to explain 20th century dynamics or even before the 19th, 18th, whatever human dynamics. And when you are going to say, okay, well, women want this or women are about this, or you're presuming to understand what women's you know, mating strategies are different from their innate proclivities strategy okay the proclivities like what do i need i need alpha fucks and beta bucks the strategies is how am i going to get it how am i going to get from how am i going to get the best of both worlds how am i going to get this bodybuilder guy who uh who is a looks like he's a great dad he's in shape he's disciplined and is the kind of guy i would very much like to have children with you know what is it a sexy sons i want to have his kids i want to have his sons because that means my dna is going to go off into perpetuity what do i have to do to get that that's the strategy the innate proclivity, the pre, uh, uh, the predisposed, being predisposed, right? Whatever, the natural proclivities are the problems to be solved. That's the ultimate goal, right? That's the those are the um, the the function, the latent purpose of the strategies. How do I get to that? So I think that needs to be clarified because too much of that gets confusing. It's lost in the in the in descriptions. We get lost in the weeds with that. So there's the innate proclivities. For instance, hypergamy is, in, in essence, it is a, is it a strategy or is it an innate proclivity? Women want the best of both worlds, right? They want the guy who is a good long, because they have a higher reproductive cost than anyone else. So they've got to have, they've got to have the hot guy in the foam cannon party. And he, it helps if he's also a multimillionaire Bruce Wayne, right? Or he has to be Superman. Right. He still it's he still needs all that to be the complete package. He can't just be alpha fucks. He also has to be the best of beta bucks as well, because that's the that's a complete package. He can't just be the fat guy who makes a shit ton of money. No matter like what I said, what is it? Uh, you know, uh, your your charming per your bulletproof game, charming personality and, you know, uh, multimillion dollar bank account doesn't make you look any better when your shirt comes off. Like guys don't want to hear that. 
because they focus primarily on a few of those that like game or, or, or money when you should be focusing on all three. But it's true. You're not going to st- like if somebody doesn't know you from Adam, they don't know what your bank accounts like. They don't know what your personality is like, but they do know what you look like when you're at the beach and you take your fucking shirt off. That right there says a lot about a guy. And it's usually that's all that it takes for women in the age of perception, which is the Instagram age, as I was saying before. So looks very important. In some cases, it is the only thing that stands between you and that woman getting to know you so you can have game and you can like say, hey, I've got a world you want to enter into. That's you don't even get past the you know uh, base number one if your if your Instagram doesn't look good or your your Tinder doesn't look good or you, how you're presenting yourself. It doesn't even have to be digital. It could just be the way that you hold yourself. How you how you look when you walk into a room. How do you look when you take your shirt off at the beach? That right there, it does, like people say, well, you know, not everybody meets uh, each other on Tinder and everything. Well, bullshit. Most people do actually. Like statistically speaking, most people meet off online in some fashion. Whether that's Tinder or a dating app is is sort of. Uh, it, it depends on what you're talking. It depends on the context. But like Instagram, hey, you meet this girl. At the, you meet this girl at, at Zook, right, at, at the club or whatever. She's like, hey, it's not about phone numbers anymore. It's, hey, follow me on Instagram. Okay, you follow her on Instagram. She follows you back. From that point on, the uh, attraction, the physicality of it all, it boils down to, like, if she's going to see you again, it boils down to how well curated your appearance is, how, how well of a magician you are with, your, with your, your, per- her public, your public perception. Are you cool enough? Are you hot enough for her and her girlfriends to approve of you? Because they're going to be looking at it too, trust me. They'll be looking at your profile. So it's not just about like dating apps, because I know people have saying, well, you know, Roll, it's not just about dating apps. You know, people meet in real time. Yeah, they do. And you know what they do once they're done meeting? They go and say, follow me on fucking Instagram. That's what they do. And it's from that point on, it's still about perception. So you gotta, you've got to be able to curate that. It's all brand management. Go read the player's handbook or buy it. Or even better, take the class that I'm just about done with right now. Um, but the... Uh, the, the the summation of all of this is you don't get to that point unless you look good enough or unless there's some sort of visceral, visceral arousal factor in all of that. You can be a really funny guy. Like I, I, I made this mistake. I'm sorry. I got to, I got to clarify this. When I was on with um, Brad Leah and he was on Axis Vegas, I, I did my bad. Mia culpa. I, I thought he, I thought he was um, not, I didn't think he was Grant Cardone, but I thought that a video that I saw of Grant Cardone, cause they look a lot alike was him talking about how he met his wife or the girl that would become his wife and how he just like badgered her and persisted and he stuck it out and guys who don't fuck think that that's in some way self-righteous they think that that's a methodology i stuck it out i was persistent she hated me in the beginning i wasn't a rock star drummer i wasn't a musician she was used to dating rock star musicians she didn't have anything to do with me yeah until she got to the point where she needed your resources more than she needed the hot monkey sex from the rock star drummer. But you will create for yourself and gaslight yourself all of these reasons as to why your persistence was self-righteous and virtuous and you stuck it out. And now, boy, she really finally saw what a great guy you were after all. Mm, Yeah, I'm sure right around 29, 30, 31 years old when she has a use for you. And guys will will make up all kinds of reasons as to why that, you know, their situation was different. And, oh, it's okay. You know, I, I stuck it out. Now we're really good. We're really great together. Then why was she didn't see that greatness when she was in her 20s fucking the rock star? I'll wait. <laughs> no, because you're, you'd, she had no use for you. And then she found a use for you. That's why her priorities had changed. Oh, Grant Cardone. Yeah, I guess he's, he's, he meets the minimum standard for good looks. And he has a lot of money. Oh, you were here all along. Yeah. That right there, that situation, like, and by the way, that's very common. Um, that's because I, yeah, I can't even begin to tell you how many times like guys have told me like they, that persistence. So I have this conversation with guys all the time is, is uh, should you stick it out? Because a lot of guys are worried that they're going to come off as like creepy or a stalker if they persist in it. If you're not Grant Cardone and you're making, you know, what, tr- a seven figure income, 
Uh, yeah, it might even if you are in some cases, it might seem a little creepy to be be persistent with the single girl all the time. It's like, hey, look, I told you, jackass, like, get away from me, creep. Like, I told you, stay away. Don't worry, I wore her down. No, you didn't. Your bank account wore her down because she needed that more than she needed. She was done with. She had her fun, right? She didn't. It, she needed the bank account more than she needed the rock star drummer. And the, so the priority shifted when a woman gets a little bit older. 